you're not going to have the house within 10 years. You're not going to get that BMW. You're not going to get that all those privileges in the first 10 years after you've studied. Maybe not even the first 20 years. But if you keep on keeping on and you find ways of keeping on, later on it pays off. Welcome to the show again. My name is Maynard. As always here on Creative Minds at Work, we'd like to speak with inspiring and uh, interesting people who are making their way in the creative industries. We're all about building a meaningful career in the creative world, um, making an impact, generating an income while you're at it. So if this is interesting to you. Please watch the show today. It is my privilege and pleasure to have um, on the show with me, Jan Hendrik. Jan Hendrik is currently the head of the Department for Creative Arts at Paul Roos Gymnasium, right here just down the road in Stellenbosch. Um, he has a very interesting focus on film and theater production, especially for kids looking to explore and express their own developing um, and emerging creativity, creativity or creative potential. He's a seasoned actor, seasoned producer, working all the way from car con car stages in Oatswerden um, to most recently on your own screen as Tony in St. Worcester. For those of us who don't know, that yes. is a popular show here, just here by us. I'm and sorry about some that. incredible. <laughs> no, no, you're more than welcome. We enjoyed watching you. Um, Jan Hendrik has done some incredible work to mobilize young people to engage in and develop their own creative abilities, whether it's in writing, in performing or producing, uh, just empowering them all along the way. He's got a passion for the performing arts, a heart for the next generation, and that puts him... I think in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, Jan Hendrik, puts you right at the forefront of shaping the future of the creative industries here in South Africa, which is actually which is probably the best place to be. Um, welcome, welcome, and thanks for joining us for this chat. Hi, man. It's really nice to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for thinking of me. And, uh, wow, I sound so good if you, when, you, when, you, when you describe me like that. That's really nice. Um, no. I think, uh, uh, in short, you know, I just have a heart for kids, and mm. I want them to go around responsibly with the creative side. Um, I think creativity is such a wonderful thing, but if you can't aim that gun of creativity mm -hmm. and you don't know where to point it at, it's, it's, it's something that in our day and age with all the rules and regulations and the, the, the again, kind of very business-minded uh, uh, viewpoints, that creativity fizzles out if, if I don't give my give my kids the the purposeful um, arrow to aim it mm. at that target. That is, uh, I've experienced that so much in my own life, and you don't even have to be young to experience the tension of that. I think speaking of tension, the first thing that I actually wanted to ask you to just kick off this conversation is, a lot of the times when I speak with creatives, at some point or another, they all come to a point where they have to decide, am I going to go this way with my career? Am I going to go the creative way or am I going to go the institutional way? Am I going to go work for myself or am I going to go be part of a bigger team? Am I going to continue and try and prove my parents wrong or am I going to take the job that my dad has always told me to do? And it, it's been the same exact same for you. So we just talked about you coming to that pivotal point in your career, and we'll talk about everything before that and everything after that in a moment, but just talk us through some of that emotions and considerations that went into that decision and how that almost like single moment in time uh, directed the rest of your life almost. Absolutely. Well, um, I think for me, straight out of varsity, I was part of a production company, children production company. We did shows all over South Africa. We went to Dubai and, and everywhere. But what I realized as a freelance person was that I was always working. Even on holiday, you can't have holiday because you have to create work that will eventually pay off later on. So mm. everything becomes an idea for a play, for idea for, for a production, uh, new marketing ideas, everything becomes work. Um, I remember um, 
we having to go on holiday. And if we wanted to go on holiday, we had to organize shows wherever we wanted to go. So yeah. if we didn't have those shows at the places that we were wanting to holiday, we didn't have money to have a holiday. Mm. So as a freelance person, um, I worked every year. I played most festivals, Car Con Car, Art Club, Freifius, um, and did series in between and acting. And 12 years ago, I think, uh, 2011, um, I had an opportunity to start my teaching career. Mm. And um, I still remember it very clearly. I was freaking out because I really, really loved acting. I loved being on stage. And I wanted to be an actor. Mm. And that was in my blood. Um, but I, I was married. And um, I, I, I said, told you earlier, um, me and my wife were a team, you know, and, and you can't be selfish. So as a team, we wanted to move forward. And, and those of you that don't know who my wife is, she plays the character of Ilana on, on and say, Worcester. And mm. uh, she's a veteran actress. I mean, she's 30 years in the industry. And mm. um, she is amazing. So, so I remember we sat on the stoop here in Stellenbosch. And I told Esther, listen, you just sit down. And she was like, okay, cool. I said, are you ready? We, we have to make a big decision now because this is going to be not, it's not just a year. It's not just two years. It's not just three years. If I'm going to do this properly, I want to stick with it for a good while. Mm. And, um, I told her there was this possible job at Paul Ruiz Nation as the head of arts and culture back then. It wasn't creative arts. And, um, she looked at me for a little while and she says, told me, if it makes me happy, I should take it. And being a very sober minded and, and almost practical, critically practical person, I told her that what would make me happy is if we can move forward in life at a higher pace monetary and also a family mm -hmm. and um i said and she told me well if that's what's going to make you happy then do it and um, i became part of this amazing institution and and uh i'm very very privileged uh i must say um uh, the boys here my students, I call them my boys, they're mm. truly amazing young men. And I've got the world, world's respect for them um, because it's not easy to be a youngster these days. Um, you are bombarded by so many, so many opinions and thoughts. I mean, we, when we were kids, my biggest concern was if it's raining, Am I going to build a boat and go play with it in the street? And if it's not raining, can I go to a friend? That's it. Even in high school, was it, can I go surfing or can't I go surfing? That was it. I didn't worry about other people's opinions about me. I didn't care about online opinions. I didn't care about influences. And I didn't worry about world problems because the world was far out there now it's in our laps it's in our hands um so t to me that was a pivotal moment in my career so far and i don't think i'm not of the mindset that you have one thing that you do your whole life i mean uh in this modern age you can reinvent yourself again within two years if you are open to taking a chance and 
calculate it. And if you're open to learn and you can put your ego in your back pocket, you know, then, uh, then I think, um, if I think about it now, one of the, the biggest, um, uh, attributes I think for success is to be a leader without leading. Yes. And to be able to go, I'm going to do something totally new, but for now I'm going to follow. I'm going to lap up every single bit of information and that type of leader doesn't get recognized immediately. That's a long road. So, and as you're lapping up, you're making the impression, you're listening, people start realizing that your intentions are pure, your, your way of working with them is, is authentic. And then other people choose you as a leader and you don't choose to be a leader. If that makes sense to you? Yes, so, of course. I yeah. um, I, re I want to come back to the to these two things that you mentioned, which I think is fascinating for me. Things that I've also been thinking about a lot lately. The one is to reinvent yourself and do that without ego, which I think is key. And the other one is to be a leader that follows. We'll come back to both of those. I think before that, I just have one question. So for those who don't know, is um, Jan Hendrik, and correct me if I get this wrong, um, but You've been sure. working with um, with young people to actually produce their own media, produce own films and do things like that and film it and be part of that whole creative process. So I remember when I was at school and even early in my career, in my creative career especially, we were taught to regurgitate and to follow and to not ask questions. And it makes it extremely oh, yeah. difficult to find your voice, your creative voice later in life. So what Absolutely. for me was so incredible is the work that, that you are doing along with the team, I guess, to empower young people to find their voice early on. Won't you talk to us a little bit about that, about the value of that? How do you get it right? What are some of the reactions, challenges, opportunities, anything that comes to mind? Well, uh, let's start at the beginning. In 2021, during COVID, me and the um, head of uh, art, the culture head, sat around the table and he said, it's COVID and what can we do? Um, I believe that uh, law, any institution of significance doesn't just have a responsibility to itself, but it has a responsibility to the greater South Africa. Um, uh, in our uh, constitution, it says uh, Paul Ruiz is a leading boys' school for South Africa. So it's not just mm. in South Africa. And um, I took that literally at that stage. And I said, listen here, guys. It says that here in the book. So let's do something. So I was then already doing film studies with my grade nines for about five years. Uh, the impetus for that came from uh, my love for films, but also looking towards the future. Um, I think media creation is one of the biggest industries and biggest growing industries, just creating content, you know? Mm. And instead of waiting for a platform like TikTok or Instagram to choose the, um, the, the format, you as an individual choose the format and you choose the narrative that you want to want to follow in your mm. brand, whether that's your personal brand or whether that's a company that you're working for, you choose the narrative. So through film studies, um, I try to empower them to become purposeful and responsible creators of um, media, okay, of content. Because whether it's a two-minute movie that you see on Instagram or whether it's a short film or whether it's a long uh, feature film, it's all content. You know, it's, it's all, it's all media. And, um, so through that, and I said, listen here, we've been playing with the idea for years about either making a movie ourselves or this national 
film festival, short film festival for um, high school learners. And, and we kicked it off. We sent out invites and we got massive input from the industry, massive buy-in, really, really good buy-in from the industry. Uh, I hope we'll get some more buy-in industry. And um, then, uh, of course, you can't do anything alone. So maybe on the leading, on the creative side, I am more um, pushing that in terms of, of uh, designing the look or the feel. We created a certain, certain uh, uh, identity for Fullmet, you know. And then on the marketing and, and, and organizing some of the stuff, uh, our marketing department under Luna Page um, is also a really big support. So between um, me, Louisa Klokamp, and Luna Page, we put this thing together over a year. We host uh, info wow. sessions, and we put a library on YouTube, so you can check out Filmit on YouTube, um, where there's a lot of information for youngsters looking towards the movie industry. Within South Africa, I mean, you can make a good living in South Africa as, as a uh, lighting guy or a sound guy on set. And that content production is not just movies anymore. That is going towards social media. Any business, don't. You need a setup. You need good sound. You need good lighting. You need some creative guy that knows how to narratively form a story to push your brand because if mm. it's not purposeful it falls flat on the ground mm. if you don't have a purpose and a vision for for your story for your brand and you're just shooting some pretty pictures your market is going to forget about it very very soon because i think you so i also um do holistic marketing consultation. Uh, mm. f so community, getting the community do your, to do your marketing for you. Um, I'm also a life coach. Um, so so there's a, a lot of stuff. That's why I have insight into this. So it's, I'm not just grabbing it out of the air. <laughs> um, of course. So I, so I have a, I have a follow-up question for you about when it comes to... Um, to, you mentioned um, you mentioned your job at at Polaris. You've been there for for longer Twelve than years a decade. Now. Yes, yes, that's incredible. And and to just to be honest and frank, you are one of the very few people I know that have managed to healthily, if that's a good word <laughs> or even a word, but wholesome in a wholesome way, yes. um, carve out a creative calling mm. and career within a traditional established institution like a school like a school like that that is filled with things like heritage and legacy and tradition and so which isn't traditionally i don't know if you know you probably know this which isn't traditionally the best environment for free thinking creatives yet it seems like you are thriving at the school and the school is thriving because of you there so um have you ever experienced any tensions along those lines and how have you managed to resolve those tensions or work with them to bring tradition along with creativity, the old and the new? Talk to us a little bit about that. Um, you know what, Maynard, if there's not tension, you're not growing. That is true. If you are comfortable and you're sitting back and going just, so if there's not tension, you're not growing. Uh, so to, I think um, to address this, more in a kind of holistic way to carve out your own island you need to be aware that there might be sharks in the water and that the ocean is not going to be the temperature you want it and that you know things aren't um, necessarily the way you like it but if you keep on chiseling, whether the water's cold or the sharks are at your door, eventually, you know, you, to, you get to create your island. And, mm. uh, and so, of course, there's tension. 
I think in any, not just a, a traditional school, in any place, there's tension because we're people, you know? Yes. And to one's opinion differs from your opinion. And sometimes you need to just say, well, this is, this is my pool. Get out. You can't swim in my pool anymore. So I think boundaries are very, very important, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I think there's more than one way to, to set your boundaries. I think you can set your boundaries through physically and verbally communicating it with someone else. But I think you can also make a boundary for yourself by um, authentically creating creative products uh, in your way, mm. you know? Yeah, and make it your With, own and, and give it yes. your voice out in the world, yes. Yes, and, and it won't necessarily always, you have to realize you're working with, but if it's authentic, it's honest, and the people with you in the production understand that it's honest work, and the product then comes across as authentic. Uh, without any bibs and bobs, you know? So, so the product at the end of the day, and there's an energy to it. People realize when what you put on the table is an honest product. And sometimes it's not the, it's not the, the, a team winning accolades products. Luckily for me, sometimes it is. Um, mm. So we've been very blessed this year with our Tunil productions. Um, but that authenticity shines through. And over a long term, I think that makes you, that gives you, um, uh, gives you, um, what do you call it? Uh, it, it, it? It gives you standing, you know, mm. it gives you it gives you a presence wherever you are, whether it's in, in, in certain corporate agencies and uh, whether or not. And at the mm. end of the day, you only have three cho cho choices, accept it, change. And the third choice many few people don't realize is leave. Yes. Yeah. Just so, go. Yes. Just go. All right. So I, um, I appreciate, I like this idea of honest work and of authentic work. And um, at the end of the day, in my experience, it's exactly like you said, it's the only work that makes a real difference. It's the only work yeah. that, um, that people resonate with, that inspires people, that causes people to respond and mobilize them. It's work that comes from the heart, not trying to be too aspirational or fluffy or anything. It's just no. true. It's true what you're saying. I want to come back to um, this one thing. I just want to, um, oh yeah, to re reinvent yourself without ego. That for me is fascinating, especially in the creative industries, uh, whether you're working in performing arts or in creative communication or in marketing, wherever you're working, maybe working as a designer or photographer or a videographer, whatever it is that you do at some point, whether it's due to a different context or the change of the industry or just at the rapid rate of which technology is growing, but you have to adapt and you have to continue to grow. You have to reinvent yourself. And if you're going to be stuck in your ways, you are going to die. Absolutely. But here's here's my question. Yes, exactly. But here's my question to you. How do you stay fresh? And um, teaching a new generation, you have to at least in some way or form, be on top of things and at least know what's going on in the world. So how do you stay inspired? How do you keep learning? We here on the channel, we're big fans of lifelong learning, not to study once for three years, 20 years ago, and then forget about it, but to continue that, that lifelong learning habit. How do you do it? How do you teach it to the young people of today? You know, talk to us about that. I cannot, there cannot be change in life if you, there's no change in me. Mm. So um, it's that thing what Einstein said about pushing up the, the, the you know, the, the expecting the same outcome over and over and not changing anything. So I tend to 
I've done sales marketing, I've done marketing management, uh, social media marketing. Um, uh, I This past holiday, I did an AI engineering course through Udemy. Um, mm. So I want to, I did my life coaching, my NLP qualifications. So, oh man, how do you, I want to stay true and authentic and I don't want to bullshit. Mm. So the, a few years ago, last year or the year before that, yes, the year before last, I did my life coaching course. And a big thing for me that, that pushed me to do the life coaching course is that I didn't want to stand in front of my life orientation students and be a textbook teacher. Mm. So when, so a lot of people have a misconception about life orientation and life orientation is recipes, uh, psychological recipes that we give students to become healthy um, members of the, the public, you know? Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to just stand there and go, this is what you're going to do and this is going to be the outcome. I really wanted to get on their side, in their minds, and have them understand um, that it's a big world out there with lots of different people. And you have to work within that world, even if you have your own convictions about certain things. Mm. And uh, that's about respect. So I keep on coming back to this. If I can be truthful in front of you or a group of people or any individual, and I can stand in front of them and say, listen here, I have something to offer. And in front of my class as well. I've got some knowledge to offer you. I want you to accept it. I have this knowledge, just not just because it's in the textbook, you know, but I have this knowledge because I've gone on and studied more and did more to become uh, relevant now, to change for you now. And I'm inventing myself anew all the time to become just more, not more anything, just just more. Um, I hate, I would hate to stand in front of my students and, and they go, um, sir, you know, I'm bored in your class or sir, I don't, uh, you know, why should, why should I know this? And then I don't have an answer for them. But you should know this because in life, this and this and this and this, and um, this is why. And then I can use my life coaching experiences to tell them, you know what, I had this client, I applied some of the stuff that we I'm doing with you, and this was the outcome with that client. You understand? Without naming names, of course, but yes. to have that, that knowledge. And it's a big responsibility, I assume, to stand in front of young people that are hungry for knowledge, that hang on your every word, that watch your every action, and not just do the right things, but actually be the right person to speak into their lives. So, um, yes, yeah, go ahead. I think that 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 hits the nail on the head. And, And just that sentence, you speak into their lives. You're not talking over them. You're not, you are standing in front of them, you have to respect their time. As adults, we want people to respect our time and go, well, you know what? You want an hour out of my day? Um, I'm, I, I'm a very busy man. You know, my time is money. But for mm-hmm. them, their time is precious as well. You know, these kids finish school, then they go and do their extracurricular activity, whether it's sport or whatever. They get home at six o'clock, half past six in the evening. Then only they start with their homework. They finish at nine, 10, and then they go to sleep and the next day repeat. Hmm. I mean, that is a 16 hour day. And yes, 
we speak into the kids. So I respect their time and mm -hmm. I value their, their, their attention. And um, yes, I believe that that's, yeah, I, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that word, speak into them. <laughs> Yeah, that's Henrik, what I have two. I have two more questions for you before um, before we wrap this episode. I think the first one is is maybe a little bit more on the negative side, and then the last one a little bit more positive. But I think there's no way that you build a career that's as meaningful as this, um, where you don't run into any challenges or disappointments or things that happen along the way. I know it's been like that for me, as as it is for many creative people out there. So um, what has your experience been with some of the disappointments and challenges in your own life, whether um, no matter what the context is, have you ever had some of those and how did, uh, how did you work through them? And, um, and what would be your advice for creative people who find themselves at a place where they feel that there's no hope or they don't know where to go or they don't know what the next step is or nothing is working out or whatever it might be? Um, yes, I definitely have disappointments and worries about, um, myself and, and about teaching in South Africa and about, uh, those creative souls that don't necessarily fit in. Mm. Um, I would say. Life is going to knock you, definitely. Um, you are going to have months without work if you're an actor. Mm. And um, what I've learned is when life gets tough, you need to get tougher. And you need to make unpopular unsatisfactory, realistic decisions and go, you know what, I might be an actor, but I'm not working now. So maybe I can go do the freaking running on a movie set. Maybe there's an option there. Or maybe mm -hmm. I can work at a wherever while I'm doing this. Why not? I was still waitering when I got married. Mm. So I was an actor. I was traveling all throughout the country, but to, to get that income for us to be able to survive, I still needed to wait. And I was a horrible waiter. I really wasn't. Thank goodness. I have a good personality because that meant <laughs> I remember I remember this guy ordered a Holland uh, uh, beef stick, and mm. um, this beef stick on it, and I get to him, and his freaking suitcase is next to him, and I don't see it, and I poured that whole steak all over him. Thank goodness oh I goodness. wasn't fired, <laughs> but I was still waitering, you know. Mm. And you have to realize as well, young people. You're not going to have the house within 10 years. You're not going to get that BMW. Mm. You're not going to get that, all those privileges in the first 10 years after you've studied. Maybe not even the first 20 years. Um, but if you keep on keeping on and you find ways of keeping on, later on it pays off. Mm. And um, doors open. I also yeah. think that when when challenges hits, you need to decide. Do I want to be rich? Do I want to be comfortable? Or do I want to be a poor suffering artist? Because there's merit in being a suffering artist as well. You know, for some people, mm -hmm. that's what they see in their minds and they want to do that because being an artist is difficult, you know, and, and you go the Van Gogh road. Um, and people choose that. People choose art above everything, 
you know, but it's a choice. Nobody owes them anything. And then the last thing is put yourself first. If you can do something better than somebody else can do it in a certain area, wherever that is, don't stand back. Mm. Do it better than them. Go into that place and do it better. And if their business or their concept or whatever suffers a little bit, tough. <laughs> they weren't the best. Yes. If you can do it better, stop caring so much. Mm. That's about people, you know, about people's opinions or whatever. If you can do it better and you know you can do it better, and you don't get the role for that show, for that character, write your own damn play. Write your own movie. Do your own thing. Because nobody is going to give you a chance, and there's a million reasons why people don't give you a chance. It's not necessarily that you weren't the best. It's not necessarily that you weren't the nicest person or that you didn't try hard enough. Sometimes they just don't feel like you. Sometimes you walk in, they don't like your shoes, you don't get the role. Sometimes you explain the concept to them, they go, you know, maybe it's a dodgy guy, they go, you know what, I can change the concept a little bit. And two months later on, they come out with the same concept as you had. So yes. if you can do something better, do it better. Hmm. Is, that does, is that, is that okay? That is solid advice. I really like that. I... Um... I also like the idea of not to give up and just to keep on and uh, and do your own thing. My 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 last question to you, which you have now kind of answered, was what is your advice to young up and coming creatives? Uh, normally, I ask that to people who don't know any young people, but you stand in front of young people every single day, so you have now kind of answered that question. Um, Jan Hendrik, thanks so much for spending the time with us. All the Thank best you, of luck with your work at Polaris and all the other places we are involved in. Um, we're going to share all the places where you can get in touch with Jan Hendrik and see the work and maybe um, join or support or do whatever with the um, do, yes. creative arts department at Polaris Gymnasium. And um, yeah, thanks so much again. I really appreciate it. If I could just, sorry, my not if... I can just uh, send out a message to, to the people. Um, artists are nothing without an audience. So mm. go watch a play. Rent that movie on box office. Uh, go to the gala evening. Follow Filmit on YouTube for our competition. Get involved with other competitions. Um, because the holy circle of performance is not finished until there's an audience. Mm. If you do a show or create a art for yourself, I, th I think you're mad. You are insane because the audience is part of it. We artists don't create for ourselves. So get off your phone, go out to galleries, buy local art, support local art, see local plays, and get our artists up and out. Thank you so much. Thank you.